evening and welcome to Hello It's Us. I'm Terry Cunningham, one of your hosts. Hello It's Us is a program based on the philosophy that life just goes better if it's us as opposed to you, me, and them. Tonight we're thrilled to have Roger LaSala, Executive Director of MYAP. Hello. Good for you. Good to here, Roger. And of course, my co-host, Keith Ruff. And you, Danny. Well, Roger, as we were talking a little bit before the show, I'm especially looking forward to this because I really don't know a whole lot about what you do other than the 15 or 20 minutes we talked about before, so we'll let you run with it. <laughs> well, I am, like Terry said, the Executive Director of MYEP. MYEP stands for Mayor's Youth Empowerment Program, um, but the name doesn't really do it justice anymore. Um, MYEP is a long-standing nonprofit organization here in, in Iowa City serving children and adults with disabilities and also uh, at-risk children. A uh, little bit of a background on MYEP for many people that have been around Iowa City for a long time. Uh, Mayor's Youth used to be part of the city of Iowa City way back in the 70s. It was a quasi uh, part of our city. Iowa City, and in 1996, it came out of the city umbrella, and it became its own nonprofit organization. Uh, many people still think that Mayor's Youth is part of the city, even though the city is a great partner, but we are not affiliated with the city of Iowa City. And the name Mayor's Youth, people still think that we are either run by the mayor or the mayor is involved with the organization, and it's not. So that's why we kind of stand by MYEP, because most people know about that. Uh, we do provide a lot of great services. I'm just going to go through some of the services that we provide. Uh, we do provide the only after-school program for kids with disability in the Iowa City area. Uh, we serve pretty much kids from all the school in the school district. We do pick up kids, and some of them gets dropped off by our location, and uh, we provide respite services, group respite, uh, supported living services, which is uh, goal-driven and skill building. We also do have an adult day program. Uh, we are currently serving about 60, 63 people in our adult day program. In the adult day program, some people come do uh, craft, some people have community jobs that they get job coaching, so they get their, they meet their staff and they, they go to the community to do a lot of their stuff. Uh, one of our newest area that we have really developed in the last three years is the residential program. We do pro provide a residential home for adults with disability. Uh, we actually have a couple new homes that we have built, which is a uh, universal design, wheelchair accessible with track system. And the first one we built was two years ago, and we have another one coming up. We are, we're gonna start building this May. So those are four people home. It's completely uh, accessible uh, with uh, automatic door opener and uh, track system in the, in, the, mm -hmm. in the ceiling. So uh, we do serve over 250 children and adults. Wow. with uh, disability, and we have over 170 employees now in the Iowa City area. Uh, we are currently located at the old La Casa restaurant on Highland Court. We moved in there about three years ago, and that has been our home. So we are steadily growing and uh, doing amazing things in the community. I guess so. <laughs> I had no idea that you were anywhere near that large. Yes, we are. And uh, for the at-risk program, we do have what we call the youth leadership program. And in the youth leadership program, we do provide some uh, summer employment for at-risk youth in connection with our fast track program that used to be a city high. Uh, it's under our umbrella. So we have the contract with the city of Iowa City, and we do manage the city park ride. And uh, we do have uh, also few contracts with uh, community businesses where we do provide internship to um, at-risk youth that are doing good in school and preparing for college and need summer job, we do provide those as well. So. What, is, what do you think your capacity is? 
How many youth or individuals can you work with? Well, currently, if you combine all of the people that we serve, we are serving about 250, 260 people. Um, we have the combination. The youngest person we're serving is two-year-old. And we do have kids that are in preschool that they get dropped off at the site. And uh, the oldest person we're serving is in the 40s. Uh, one more thing that I, I, I didn't talk about, we do provide what we call camp program for children with disability. Those are summer program mm -hmm. and we do winter program so when school is closed we are open and uh, we do spring break program so and many of those school days that the school closes our facility is open so we have kids uh, coming to our facility so uh, that's a very popular program right now like in May we start preparing for the summer program and uh, last last year we had over 40 kids enroll in the summer program so you know they do a lot of activities from going to a uh, baseball game to going to the zoo and uh, just pretty much giving a kid a fun and safe environment for them to go. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they're doing some skill building. So many of them have goals. Uh, some can be you know, learning to cook or learning to use the public transportation. So each person we serve, they have a team made up of their parents, their case manager, and their worker that they decide on which goal the person need to work on and uh, the, the stuff that we provide do work on those goals. Interesting. And when exactly did you say this program started? Uh, the, the mayor's youth program started in the 70s. Uh, it started in the 70s. It was uh, out of the governor's initiative to start some youth programming in, in the area. Uh, it was part of the city of Iowa City, and it was more of a, a temporary program, just serving uh, disadvantaged youth. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really branch into the disability field until the 90s. So way back then in the 70s, it was temporary program uh, solely relying on, on government funding and grant. Uh, they had some of the, the contract with the school district, and uh, they would provide some summer part-time employment. Uh, in the 90s, that's really when the program kind of switched over to start serving kids with disability and what they used to call the teen place. It was, you know, in the summer they have uh, kids do activities. Uh, I came on board about 2008, about four years, going on five years. That's kind of when we started having new strat strategic plan on what services that was lacking in the community that we wanted to focus on. And one of the services that was lacking it was after school for kids with disabilities, somewhere for them to go. Uh, parents, they don't get off school three, but most kids get off at school three, so kids needed somewhere to go mm -hmm. for that period of time. So that's a big niche that the community didn't have that we do feel. And also residential program, a uh, more accessible living environment. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's very hard to find an accessible apartment or house in the community here. Yeah. So, so that was an area that we saw there was a, a really big need. So building the first one in uh, two years ago, and we knew that the need was there. We're getting more inquiry. So that's why we are building the second one. And building those accessible homes, it actually been in collaboration with the city of Iowa City because some of the funding for the purchase of the land was out of the CDBG program, Community mm -hmm. Development Program. Yeah. So we get that money, we purchase the land, and we work with local banks here to finance the construction of the loan. So this has been tremendous because this is really, truly accessible. Home. So these are all folks who are, who are adults in the, in the homes? Yes, this is all adults in the homes. Um, most of them are, are get funded through Medicaid services, um, HCBS program. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of pays for the services that they provide. Then what kind of staffing are in the homes? Uh, our staffing is pretty individualized. So uh, we have certain homes that the staffing is one-on-one -on -one because it's based on the people's needs. And we also have houses that the staffing is two to four. We have two staff present for four people living in the house. So it's there is no cookie cutter. This is the staffing okay. part that we have. It's all based and driven by the need. So if if the individual needs help with 
personal care issues and that, then, then that's what's provided. That's what's okay, provided. Very so cool, very the cool. services is wrapped around the individual's needs. Mm -hmm. So we do not fit the person to the service, but we bring the service in to the person. Terrific. It's about what the person needs. Or the house is integrated. And when I say integrated, or the mixture of disabled and non disabled. Well, the, the housing houses that we have now, it's not integrated to the okay. disability and non disability. It's integrated to the point that there's levels of disability. Okay. You have certain people that have only physical disability, uh, yeah. but you have also people that have uh, intellectual yeah. disability. Yeah. So they are integrated. Okay. But the pride that we have, the house are in the community that you would not know that there is people with disability okay. living in that house. Okay. So it's just like your house, my house, it's in the community that people um, live in. So. Okay. You said that th that part of it, the money is Medicaid and mm -hmm. the uh, home and community-based services. What other types of, of money flow through? Well, we have, for especially for our summer program, we have certain people that cannot utilize the Medicaid, especially when parents are working. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, what we call private pay, and we made it so low that parents in need, they can afford it. Uh, like our summer program for those parents that are working, we can't utilize respite services. We have a private pay of uh, $5 an hour for a group services, which is tremendously low because we just want to provide access to the services. So if somebody needs the services and we can find a way to provide it, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. uh, for people that are living in the home, most of their services pay through the Medicaid services, county and the state combined. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a certain individual that we have transitioned over from uh, the resource center, uh, like Woodward and Glenwood, and uh, a lot of their transition was done through the grant of money follow the person. Sure. So that was a good grant to get them set up in the community, provide to them the services they needed for the first year so we can make sure that their transition was successful. Mm -hmm. Then after the first year, then the, the state and the county right. picks up the services. We've had some of the folks from Money Follows a Person on. Yes. And, well, I know them because it's, it's kind of CDD. Mm -hmm. But we had several of the, of the actual folks who had transitioned mm -hmm. yeah. and then some of the uh, folks who were working with them. Mm -hmm. And they, they were delightful. It, yeah. was, it was a lot of fun. And you know, they we had a little meeting upstairs first to yeah. kind of talk about how it was going to be. And so we got down here and got everybody settled. And I was like, well, you know, one of the works. Well, do you want me to stay in here? Da 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 da. Okay. No. Yeah. They you know, two two individuals said, no, we don't need you in here. <laughs> well, but you kind of get off track, and and uh, I, I can do this if. You're getting off track, so you'll know. And I looked at the guy and said, "Or well, I can do this. That'll work." <laughs> and out they all went. You know, it was, uh, and they. We 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 have had uh, very successful people transitioning with um, money for the person, and some of those people that you know many times will never be able to live in the community. Mm -hmm. But uh, through that initiative. These people have transitioned successfully yeah. to community living, cool. and many of them are uh, enjoying the Iowa City area. Mm -hmm. They have uh, they they take the the bus, they go downtown, they enjoy a lot of the resources that the community provides. It's and and CDD has been a great partner, providing training to our staff, the PBS yeah. training, um, whenever we needed it. So that, yeah. that really has been a, a partnering effort between the state, yeah. CDD, and the it, agencies. It's amazing when you get a program that, like that where you can actually get all the services somebody needs <laughs> to succeed, yeah. how often they do, exactly. surprisingly enough. Exactly. We've, we've had some folks from uh, REMS host home program as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's pretty much the same there. And they were, they're excited to be where they're at. They mm -hmm. enjoy it. They're doing better than, than they have in years and sometimes decades. 
it's just all a, a very cool situation. And they just seem to be very pleased that they, for once, have control over their lives. Mm -hmm. And they do. And they really do have control over their life because, first of all, to be involved in the manifold person was a voluntary. Yeah. It's not a force. You have to want to do that. Yeah. Uh, many people, you know, they reluctant at first to make that transition. Yeah. But after they see some success story, uh, they were more up to doing it. Yeah. And we have transitioned people very successfully. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's just the key factor right there, Terry. It's really giving people the services that they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. And that has been the key for a lot of yeah. their successes because they had the funding they needed mm -hmm. and they also had the extra funding or to pay for a a, a down payment to pay for the, the living expenses yeah. for that time so the transition can be smooth. Sure. And also providing training to the staff before mm -hmm. the people move. That all contributed to the success of Absolutely. the transition. So yeah. we are proud to be part of that yeah. program. And you, you mentioned earlier the whole cookie cutter system. Yes. And you know, these, these are people, as you well know, that failed to fit any of the cookie cutters they had. That's right. You know, yeah, that's right. Well, we're in many cases written off and given the right opportunity, uh, that's what's happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just finished two weeks ago our Bill Sachter yes. Centennial Week, and Bill would have been 100. And there's one of the Bill movies, A Friend in, in Need, or Friend Indeed, whatever. Mm. And we showed that as part of our ADA celebration last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not to a dry eye, you know, it was, it was really kind of interesting. And every time you see it, something's different, but that showed the, the case that given, you know, one couple who paid some attention to mm -hmm. somebody, mm -hmm. he was able to successfully live in the community for years. Yes. And, I mean, you know, there was nothing terribly special about Bill in that he, he didn't have, you know, some wonderful mm -hmm. skill or whatever. He was just mm -hmm. a person who liked people mm -hmm. and happened to met a couple mm -hmm. who liked them. And, you know, the, the real thing, the real sadness of it is how many tens of thousands of people going back to you know the mid 70s we'll say when when the mainstreaming and that started mm -hmm. could have done that same thing probably not with a writer That's and true. producer mm -hmm. so that they would have had movies done about them <laughs> but for a couple people paying attention and bringing him into their world and their friends mm -hmm. and their friends getting to know him and his friends' friends getting having their friends, the man lived a wonderful life. But it's not a life that tens of thousands of other people with the same chance exactly. couldn't have lived. Exactly. And I think they also depend on comfort level. Mm -hmm. If they're comfortable with where they are mm -hmm. and who they are, mm -hmm. They'll make the grade. Sure. Well, I believe it's all about finding that connection, you know? Yeah. Um, people are people. <laughs> this exactly. building or a building, people <laughs> are people. I think, it's, I think it's takes to getting to know person. Mm. If you provide the person with the right amount of service that they need, they're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. They're going to be successful. So, you know, finding out that, hey, if I can make a connection with Terry, and we get to the point that we are comfortable with each other, we are a friend, then we'll help each other, not just on the service base, but there is some natural support mm -hmm. that can take place there. Exactly. That, you know, people always need. The people are people. No two people with disability are the same. No. No. So. No two people without a disability. Exactly. So, you know, yeah, it, it's, it is, and that is just so true. And the opportunity, and Keith and I talk about this a lot, 
one of the opportunities that we'll keep using Bill as an example was mm -hmm. he wasn't expected to succeed the first time. And you know, we have oftentimes said somebody without a disability is allowed to try something and fail mm -hmm. and fail mm -hmm. and fail mm -hmm. and fail until they finally get it right. Somebody with a disability has to prove they can do it before they get a chance yeah, to try it. That's true. And I don't know how you do that. You know, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Being, making coffee was certainly, from the stories I've heard, not Bill's first yeah. attempt at doing something. And he had some that were real doozies <laughs> and could have gone very bad. But having people there to support him and go, well, that one comes off the list. What would you like to try now? Exactly. And I'm sure that those are the same kinds of things you find with the folks you're working with. Exactly, and, and I always push about setting realistic goals, setting achievable goals. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, 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 it's nice to dream that I can do this, I can do yeah. that, but it really comes down to setting a goal that you know somebody can reach. So if they fail the first time, they can try it a different way. Mm -hmm. If they fail the second time, they can try it a different way until yeah. we know they can reach that goal. Sure. I have I have worked in this field for a long time. Uh, and, you know, I started as a direct uh, worker and kind of worked my way up. I have worked with children that, you know, one of the goals was to tie their shoes. And yeah, maybe it took a couple months to do it, mm -hmm. but the day that it happened, yeah. it was a celebration. We all taking off sure. our shoes and bringing it so they can tie. So it's, it's, sure. it's setting realistic goal that we're not setting people to fail. And if, you know, if somebody comes in and tells you, you know, they want to live in an apartment on them, with them, you know, by themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, clearly that's probably not going to be something that can happen the next week. That's right. So, you know, by setting down with them and, and coming up with that uh, list um, for the road they have to travel before they can get there. And being able to break that up into small, achievable mm -hmm. things. And also being able to celebrate the success yes, of those absolutely. small, achievable things. Yeah, abs and to comfort the failures. Yes. You know, God knows, you know, growing up, I didn't succeed at everything. <laughs> I didn't either. No. So, I didn't either. But you know, you you have the the support of the family. After I had my accident, I broke my neck in a car accident in my senior year of high school. Went to college, you know. After, and after my freshman year, went to the hospital for the annual six month checkup thing. Mm -hmm and decided I needed to get my license back or find out whether I could mm -hmm. because that was going to play a major role in what kind of a vehicle I would need to get. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did my week, came home on a Friday and, you know, told my folks that I was going back Monday to take driver's ed. No ticker tape parade, no balloons, no cake. Just that look, oh God, you're doing it again. <laughs> but they, and I said, this is why I have to do this. I either have to get a vehicle that I can drive and get into myself, mm -hmm. or I have to get one that somebody else could drive. And they understood that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I said, they, there was no joy in Mudville necessarily, but they let me do it. And we celebrated when I got home the next Friday with a driver's license. That's right. That's right. And you know, that's you just have to do it that way. And it shouldn't you know, and the reality of it is it's no different than you treat no, non-disabled kids. No it's not. You know, no it's differences. Not. And you know service is service, like I always say, people are people. Uh, some people need we all need help, some more than others. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I look at it like we all have a level of disability somehow. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, mine is different than yours. So there's ability that you have that I don't have. So it's, when, we, when we're looking at providing services to the client that we serve, we're looking at it, okay, 
what is it that they need that they can't do themselves because of their disability and how can we provide that accommodation so they can live the life mm -hmm. that they choose. And, and, as we, and as we all grow older, not disabled and disabled, we're becoming disabled. Yes. Yeah. Disabled. But not everybody wants to admit that. No. No. You know, uh, 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 and instead, so many folks with aging issues, God, and I'm now one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I don't have a disability. I just, you know, can't walk this far anymore, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. It's not a disability, I'm just old. You need these services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those services would be nice. Yeah. I need those services. Why can't we come together, come together. Yeah. and fight for these services together for all of us? Yes. Yes. And it's, uh, services are services. I, I believe we should wrap people with the service they need. And that probably will be the most mm -hmm. economic and efficient way to assist people sure. to really live the life they choose. So, and it's it's yeah, it's probably going to be cheaper in the long run. It will be. You know, instead of causing people to fail at this, 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 to finally get to this one, because somebody says you have to go through all of these to get to to this one. Yep. It's it's the maze that we travel. It's the the the. the the paperwork, the requirement, and all that mm -hmm. stuff that as provider, we have to deal with on a daily basis. Sure. So we can just get to that providing services. It will be so much easier to unlimit some of those red tapes so you can just provide the services. Absolutely. But we have to deal with it. We have to deal with it. So do you have volunteers that work with you? Or? Yes, we do have volunteers. We do have uh, volunteer that can work with us during the summer program and uh, because we have a lot of kids so we have limited number of staff so we can always match volunteer uh, that way but we have volunteer within any area that we need as well okay. uh, with our at risk program all that is volunteer based work so you know from the board of supervisor uh, the board of uh, uh, MYEP to the advisory board of the fast track program to uh, people that run all those uh, evening sessions all are volunteers. Okay. So we, we use volunteer all the time. We also use volunteer in our building to, you know, accommodate things. So, so anybody who's interested should call yes. the, the name and number that hopefully is being yes. placed periodically? Uh, they can go to our website as well. It's www.myep.us. There's actually a volunteer application they can fill in online as well. Cool. And they can tell us you know, what they're looking to, to volunteer for, and we'll contact them and set them up for volunteer Great. work. So. Well, we've run out of town time for this segment. Thank you so much for coming, Roger. This has been just incredibly enlightening. and. I enjoy this. Yes, 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 And good to see you guys again. If there's more stuff we need to talk about, let us know. Please but give me a call. Till now. See you all next week. Have yeah. a good one, Keith. And I hope you guys enjoy the beautiful weather. Oh, outside. we will. You as well. Thank you. Good night out there.